hello and welcome back to the online classes today we are going to begin a new chapter that is a shot in the dark written by h h munro now before we go into the chapter let us see a short introduction to the author h h munro better known by the pen name saki was a british writer of the edwardian era Born on 18th December 1870, H. H. Munro is considered as a master of the short stories and is often compared to O. Henry and Dorothy Parker. His stories used to be very witty and mischievous. Much of Saki's work contained the conventions and hypocrisies of Edwardian England with the ruthless but straightforward life and death struggles of nature. But he was mostly known for his novels the westminster alice when william came the open windows and the toys of peace so let's move to the chapter now turn to the first page philip sledby settled himself down in an almost empty railway carriage so here we can see that our story begins with a man named philip sledby who gets in inside a railway bogey okay the compartment of the train which is almost empty now he was pleasantly aware that he was going on an agreeable and profitable mission so he is well aware that he is going on for a mission which is going to be proved as profitable one in long run now he was bound for brilmanor the country residence of his newly achieved acquaintance mrs solpen jago now where is he going he is going to brilmanor and brilmanor is the country residence that means a farm house kind of okay uh, of his newly made friend acquaintance over here means a person whom you know very slightly that means you must have met that person once or twice and that is why you don't know that person much okay and uh, the that name of that person is mrs solpen jago to i mean whom he is going to meet Now Honoria Solpen Jago was a person of some social importance in London so she holds some importance so she is socially very important in London and of considerable influence in the county of Yorkshire and even she has an influence in the county of Yorkshire now just like we are have are having states in our country states and districts similarly uh, in England it is divided into uh, counties okay and uh, so she also holds uh, much importance in chokshire now sledby was aspiring to seek election to the parliament from chokshire and had been delighted at meeting honoria at a small and friendly luncheon party now sledby wanted to contest an election from the county of chokshire and he met solpen jago in a luncheon party in a lunch party okay so now when he came to know that she is holding some importance over there in the county of chokshire so he thought of influencing her and then uh, forcing her to recommend her name sorry his name now he was still more pleased when she had asked him down to her country house for the following t- friday to tuesday now she even invited him to um, come down to her county house in brilmanor and stay there from friday to tuesday he was obviously on approval so on approval over here means something that is being tested before it is bought so she i mean solpen jago mrs solpen jago wanted to test him that is why she invited him to her country house so that she can know about him more all right and if he could secure her good will his nomination would be certain and so he was thinking that if he was able to impress mrs solpen jago then she would surely recommend his name for nomination now sledby turned his attention to the magazine lying on his lap so he had got inside the compartment and then he was sitting there on his seat and he had a magazine on his lap and he turned his attention towards there now he had scarcely glanced at a couple of pages however when he heard a smothered curse from the only other passenger in the carriage so he had only gone through he had only read a few pages of that magazine when he heard a slight uh, cursing words of uh, a passenger who was sitting just next to his seat his traveling companion was a young man of about 20 uh, 2 and 20 with dark hair 
fresh complexion and the blend of smartness and desire that marks the costume of a nut who is off on a rustic holiday so the young man uh, who was traveling along with this uh, philip sletherby in that same compartment was uh, my about uh, 22 years of age and he had uh, dark hair and his complexion was very uh, bright okay and uh, he was a kind of a blend between a person a smart person as well as a person out of a uh, person of disorder okay and the costume which he was wearing uh, it uh, appeared as if uh, a person is uh, going i mean a person is uh, off to a rustic holiday now what do you mean by rustic holiday rustic means connected to a connected to a bearing links with a village so maybe he is going on for a uh, holiday in the village okay so he was quite a confusing kind of character by his looks now he was engaged in searching furiously and for some missing or non existent thing so he was furiously searching something from time to time he dug a six penny bit out of a waistcoat pocket and stared at a, it ruefully now what do you mean by ruefully ruefully means in a sorrowful manner so time to time every time is uh, taking out six penny from his pocket or uh, i which pocket waistcoat pocket okay he was wearing a waistcoat and he had kept six pennies in that pocket and is taking it out and staring at it sorrowfully then resumed the searching operations and then again he started searching for something again a cigarette case match box a latch key silver pencil case and railway ticket were out on to the seat beside him but none of these articles seems to satisfy him he cursed again rather louder than before so he took out everything which he had in his pocket okay that was a cigarette case a match box a latch key a silver pencil case and a railway ticket and he spread them on to the seat where he was sitting beside him and these things did not satisfy he was not happy to look at those things and then he started cursing again and then that curse was uttered in a louder voice i say exclaimed a young voice pleasantly presently didn't i hear you say you were going down to stay with mrs solpin jago at brill manor now all of a sudden that man is uh, saying something to the philip sletherby and he is saying uh, i suppose i heard you saying that you are going to stay with mrs solpin jago at brill manor what a coincidence now what do you mean by coincidence coincidence means something that is happening all of a sudden in the same time okay now i am coming here on monday evening so we shall meet so he is saying that even i am also going to brill manor to meet uh, solpin mrs solpin jago by monday evening so of course we are going to meet there i haven't seen my mother for 6 months at least so he is saying i did not see my mother for past 6 months i am berty the second son you know so he is saying my name is berty and i am the second son of mrs solpin jago i say i am awfully lucky to lucky to run into someone who knows my mother just as this particular moment moment so he is saying i i must say that i am very lucky to uh, run into someone who i mean to come in contact with someone who knows my mother especially at this moment when i am in problem now i have done a very awkward thing so he is saying that i did a very big mistake now you have lost something haven't you said sletherby now sletherby is querying him that uh, did you lose anything i think you have lost something not exactly but left behind something which is almost as bad anyway so he's saying not exactly i did not lose exactly something but i left behind something and that is as bad as losing i have come away without my sovereign purse now what do you mean by sovereign sovereign is a gold coin which was used formally as currency in britain roughly equivalent to a pound sterling okay so he is saying that i have left my sovereign purse with 4 pounds in it and i had 4 pounds in that all my worldly wealth for the moment so he is saying that at the moment that was what i have i was having okay and i and that purse also i left in my room it was in my pocket all right just before i was starting and then i wanted to seal a letter and the sovereign purse happens to have my crest on it so he is saying you see i already had that in my pocket but just before i was uh, go, coming out of my house i had to seal my letter and for that i had to take out my sovereign purse because it had my crest the crest is a kind of symbol which every royal family okay ha- used to have in olden days 
all right so they had a symbol over there i am i mean that was inscribed in that uh, gold coin and that was uh, there in the sovereign purse so he took out the purse to put the stamp in the letter so i whipped it out to stamp the seal with and like a complete idiot i must have left it on the table and just like an idiot i must have left that purse on the table i have some little silver loose in my pocket so i have some silver coins uh, loose silver coins in my pocket some changes are there but after i w- ha- i had paid for a taxi and my ticket i had only got this single little sixpence left but after paying for my taxi and my ticket i only have this sixpence left with me I am stopping at a little country in near Bronque for 3 days fishing so I am going to stop in a country in in means hotel okay near Bronque for fishing so I am going to do fishing for 3 days there not a soul knows me there and nobody knows me there and my weekend bill and tips and cab to and from the station and my ticket on to brill that will amount up to 2 or 3 pounds won't it So he's saying, but um, if I'm going to stay there in the uh, hotel, and then I have to pay my bills and the tips to the waiters, and uh, then I have to pay for my cab uh, from the hotel to the station, and then I have to buy, purchase a ticket for m- myself to Bril Manor. So all these things will sum up to either two or three pounds, uh, won't it? If you wouldn't mind lending me two pounds ten or three for. Um, preference i shall be awfully grateful so he's saying if you don't mind if you could uh, mind me giving me uh, either 2 pounds and 10 cents or approximately 3 then i shall be very grateful to you i think i can manage that said sledobi after a moment hesitation so sledobi hesitated for a moment and then said okay fine i can give you that thanks awfully it's jolly good of you so thank you very much uh, i must say you are a very good person Uh, it will be a lesson to me not to leave my wealth lying about anywhere now he is saying that and it is going to be a lesson for me so that next time when i come out of my house i'm uh, pretty careful about my things which i am supposed to carry when it ought to be in my pocket so i'll be very careful of keeping my things in the pocket still when a sovereign purse has your crest on it but then i might doubt it because i have that crest over there in my purse and i may take it out for sealing letter again so you never know but i'll be very bit careful i mean i'll be care- careful a bit what is your crest by the way let us be asked carelessly now he is asking what kind of crest are you are having what is how does your crest look like a demi line holding a cross crosslet in its paw so he is saying that it's a demi line now demi line means it's a image of a line cut out of at the waist so till the waist you have that line and that line is holding a cross crosslet it is, what do you mean by cross crosslet it is a cross with a cross bar near the end of each arm okay when your mother wrote to me giving me a list of train she had a greyhound crest on her note paper observed sledderby now sledderby is saying when your mother gave me an invitation and she had given me the list of trains in that she sealed the letter with the greyhound crest but you are saying that it's a demi lion holding a cross cross slip there was a hint of coldness in his voice so it appeared that now sledderby is doubting that man's intention okay 